So here we have this natural herb called wormwood, or it's called artemisinin. Okay, now it's been used for well over 2,000 years as part of Chinese medicine, been very, very effective with a lot of different things, antimicrobial, especially anti-malaria. But then they found a way to synthesize it and to make it synthetically. And then all of a sudden, um, the effectiveness of this natural herb went way down as far as using the natural version. Um, they'll say that it's uh, not very bioavailable, expensive, it doesn't work as good as a drug, which it may not work as good as a drug, but it's been used for over 2,000 years. So it's stood the test of time. And today I want to talk about how amazing this uh, plant is. And if you're going to grow your own natural pharmacy, this is definitely one to put on the list to grow. But right now, um, the synthetic version is the most effective treatment for malaria. Apparently, it can actually stop uh, the different stages of this malarial parasite. But wormwood is very effective for worms. It's good for viruses, antiviral, bacteria. And there's some interesting research, which I'll put down below, on uh, what it can do for COVID. And is a pretty potent anti-Lyme. You know, this little parasitic spiral kite that you can get from a tick bite. But today I'm going to talk a little bit more about its um, potent effectiveness for cancer. And I don't know why, but a lot of these um, remedies for worms and parasites and even viruses also tend to parallel uh, for cancer. And wormwood is at the top of the list because it does some really interesting things in relationship to cancer. Uh, the first thing that I want to talk about is in its ability to selectively cause something called apoptosis to the cancer cells. Now, first of all, the word selectively, that means that it targets the cancer cells, not your own cells. So that's pretty cool. And now what does this apoptosis mean? That means that the cell commits suicide, okay? It kills itself. And so wormwood has the ability to cause the cancer cell to commit suicide because normally it doesn't do that. It lives forever. It has a limited lifespan. But wormwood could actually cause apoptosis in cancer cells, both in the lab, in a little Petri dish, as well as in animal studies. Now, it's studying different mechanisms of how it actually can deal with cancer. And, uh, and I want to talk about it because it's quite interesting. Uh, one mechanism has to do with iron. It'll take a little bit of your own iron from your red blood cell and cause that iron to oxidize, turning it into a free radical and directing it to the cancer cell itself. Now, this is another mechanism of how it can kill a parasite or a worm. It's through this uh, iron oxidation effect. When iron tends to go into that um, oxidation form, it's very toxic to the cells, especially cancer cells. Now, the other thing that it can do, and before I get into that, I want to just explain one thing about cancer. Cancer cells come from normal cells. Okay? So a normal cell can switch over to a cancer cell when there's damage to the mitochondria. There's this protein complex called HIF. Okay? And without getting too technical, it's this factor that involves hypoxia. Hypoxia is a lack of oxygen. So apparently it's this factor or this protein complex that triggers this switch from a normal cell to cancer cell. So anything that can inhibit this switching, I think be important, right, when dealing with cancer. Especially if you have cancer and you want to avoid uh, more of the normal cells converting over to cancer. So it just so happens that the phytonutrients and wormwood Okay, have the ability to inhibit this protein complex. And it's also interesting that hypoxia is involved, which explains a lot because inflammation, for example, is one trigger because when you have inflammation, you have less oxygen. But apparently there's other things that can trigger uh, cancer that go beyond just hypoxia. But the cool thing is that wormwood has the ability to uh, inhibit this uh, compound. Also, wormwood has um, another uh, mechanism of inhibiting the normal cells from producing this increase in blood vessels to the tumor. So one thing that cancer does is it um, recruits blood supply from your normal cells, and it causes your normal cells to uh, produce blood vessels into the tumor. So this is just one little trick that these cancer cells do. 
Well, wormwood is anti-angiogenic, so it can help diminish that mechanism. Now, wormwood is also um, highly anti-inflammatory. So um, just by addressing inflammation, you can stop the spread of cancer as well as the formation of cancer too, especially since there's this link between inflammation and cancer. And some people are using wormwood for autoimmune because autoimmune is an inflammatory uh, problem. And the last thing involving cancer that wormwood can help a person with, it has an anti-metastatic uh, effect which basically means it inhibits the growth of cancer, which is pretty cool. But anyway, I just wanted to share some of the interesting effects of this plant that anyone can actually grow in their garden or their greenhouse and the amazing uh, properties it might have in potentially helping you. Now, since we're on the topic of natural remedies, if you haven't seen my video on garlic, uh, that's pretty cool. I put it up right here. Check it out.